I've got an example here. We'll go through kind of how I use it to set zero angle. Yeah, in let's a bit. let's let's go through the okay, the next okay. step here. So there technically there'd be two ways you could use this to set your zero angle. You could use the way that I just showed you, and then you could pull that up, and you could type in these elevation and windage offsets manually. So okay. if if you happen to not do it through your favorites profile, you can just pull that up and type it in. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's write those numbers down. Okay. It's going to be a lot of users, every single user at this point that has Ford off, that has favorite profiles, that is running zero angle. This feature hasn't been available, so they might have to yep. go back in. So now, uh, if you wanted to do this just to, to test it out, yep. um, you could go back, select one of your favorites. So we'll go into the 6.5 Creedmoor one, and we'll type in 100 yards, because that's the distance we're at. We'll go into edit rifle info, and we'll find zero angle. So we've got, you want to really make sure that you've got all your inputs Correct, correct here. So yeah. that's going to be a big thing on zero angle. A lot of people will say, hey, I've tried zero angle and it just, it doesn't seem to work out. Well, you've got to have all this stuff on the money. Otherwise yeah. you're, especially you're your wind be, speed and direction. Yep. That it has a lot more effect than people seem to understand. So we'll say that we shot this on a calm day. There's zero mile an hour wind. I don't remember what it was when I shot that group, but uh, that's what we're going with. So down at the bottom, you've got impact height and impact location yep and those are default to inches yep if yep. you want to change that you've got height and windage unit you can select that you can change it to whatever you want but since we got inches displayed i'm going to stick with inches yep. uh positive numbers are high negative numbers are low negative numbers are left positive is right okay so just like a, a standard xy coordinate yep so i wrote this down as 0.83 inches high so we'll type in 0.83 right there go down to windage we were 0.52 right, so we'll just do 0.52. Select done. You hit find zero angle, and bang, there it is Bob's for you. Bob's your uncle. Yep. That simple. Awesome. And a, a kind of a, a added fact that a lot of people might not know about, you can check this that you typed it in right. So shot at 100 yards. I know that it's supposed to be 0.83 and 0.52 for your offsets. If you have all of your conditions that you shot it in set still on the HUD, you can click this little box in the bottom Yeah. and it'll show you here. So you got to take your wind out. Yep. Let's take this wind out. So 0.84, that's probably within the rounding error of, of the yeah. calculation because it was 0.83. Yep. And then windage, we've got 0.53. So again, uh, I typed 0.52 in probably within rounding yeah. error. Yeah. We're talking hundreds of an inch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty remarkable and a, and a good acid check there. Yep. I, I do this every time I set zero angle. I go back to the HUD and I click it and I make sure that the inputs I put in are popping out on the HUD because then I know I didn't mess anything up. So let's let's move on here. That's okay. that's a, a great way to use uh, target analysis for just kind of your your first. Oh, I got this five shot group. What is it? Yep. Um, let's transition into maybe bigger shot groups or how. Okay the preferred way to set up your zero angle, whichever yeah. you would like. So, uh, yeah, we can talk about that a little bit. So I've got a, a pretty decent example here. Uh, it's a target where I've got a couple different groups on it. These are all at different distances. This top left one was 100 yard, which, I mean, that's a... That's a little That's a zinger. There. Yeah. Man, that was my 6GT match gun at 100 yards. So this is a good example of when it might be kind of tough to use group analysis because these things are just clustered up. You're yeah. going to have a really hard time distinguishing what bullet is what. Mm -hmm. So personally, I like to shoot my zero angle at two or 300 yards because those shots are going to have a little more dispersion. You'll get more resolution on placing those just within the app. And generally, like you can, this group here is a 10 shotter at 300. You can see where every one yeah. of those went. That's a pretty remarkable 10 shot group. That's a pretty dang good 10 shot group too. Yeah. Jacob laying down with a sandbag and a yep. bipod. Yeah, I don't remember how what the wind conditions that day were, but I either way that's a that's a pretty good group. Six GT with one yep. tens and Varget, it's the recipe for success. Yeah, obviously, yep. load it not over pressure, and it's going to shoot pretty dang good. Yeah. So here I've got a a little better example. This was a three hundred yard group. I've got nineteen shots here. I shot one shot at steel, and then I shot on paper just to verify that it'd be on the paper, mm -hmm. and. uh what I started doing about this time is at the bottom, I wrote all of my conditions down, which I wouldn't have to with group analysis. I can write that in the title. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to remember, hey, it was an eight mile an hour wind from 230 degrees, I don't have to write it on here. I can put it on the title. 
Yeah. But that's what I did at the time, so that's why it's going to be a good example of how I use zero angle. So this was a, we'll go over to 6GT. I, I just kind of whipped this up quick from data that I had before. This is at 302 yards to be exact. Which and is important to be exact. Yes, it's, it is. it's important to be exact. I mean, one or two yards, not going to kill you, but if, if you can be, you be more be. accurate. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I had a six to 10 mile an hour wind here. I put an eight in for kind of the average and it was at a 220. All right. So here's how you set zero angle within the app. You'll okay. go to edit rifle info. So you're in the HUD. You've got your solution for 300 yards in yep. that wind condition with a, a a, a kind of a generic 100 yard zero yep. let's say yep and i i've got uh, all of the atmospheric conditions set in there too from the day also, I've, I've got that written in so it's going to be like yeah. this is what i did the day i set zero angle for this gun okay so go back to edit rifle info we'll toggle over to zero angle and we'll hit that find zero angle so i'm going to scroll through and make sure everything's set so like right here 100 yards well i shot at 302 so we need to make sure that's good all of that stuff it's looking pretty good. So now I don't have to manually type this in. I can hit measure impact location and it'll take you through group analysis. So you see it right just here. popped up right so there. So your first option when you're presented with the three ways right there yep. is measure impact location is your first one. Yep. That will take you right to group analysis. Yep. And then the bottom option is find zero angle. And that's the traditional method that we've used before. So we'll hit measure impact location here, okay. and that's going to take you to group analysis, and it's the same exact process. Nothing changed here. We'll take a photo. We'll try to, maybe I'll take it a little crooked here just so we can use that rotate feature. So I'm going to rotate this out to. That's nice that it's in a half the, of a degree. Yeah, so we tried it with one degree, but it was a little too coarse. Yep. So there we got it nice and square, and. So I guess I kind of forgot to mention why you want it square. If you've got it angled a little bit, so your group would be up here. Oh, but sure. But the, the app doesn't know that you didn't take it square, so your elevation and windage offset are going to be a little yep. different. So that's why it needs to be square. Very and important. Also, make your, make your targets square too and level, because yeah. if your target's not level and then you, you take this and have a square picture, then like... You yeah. just did the same thing, only it looks level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, hang up your targets square as well. Yeah. All right. So, that looks pretty good there. That's fine. So, this is about a three inch group. So, I'm going to use three inches for my measurement point. As you can see here, it already knows I'm in my 6GT favorite profile. It already knows the bullet diameter and your target and, the, and the yards. That stuff all got pulled from the set zero angle stuff and your favorites profile. Perfect. Uh, we'll skip over title just to kind of move this along here. Uh, group's about three inches. I'm going to use three inches yeah. here for it. Now, you could use just one inch if you wanted. You could, yeah. but okay. uh, I've noticed the, the resolution's a little bit better. And, I mean, we're talking hundredths of an inch, yeah. not not like tenths, Yeah. If, if you set it about the size of the group size. Okay. So, three inches. we got a half-inch grid again, so we'll set one right there. Set the other right there. we got... Let's see, one, two, three, yep. All right, point of aim. A little windy that day. I was off a little bit. We'll set that where I was aiming. Now we'll get to the impact points, and I'll just kind of try to blast through this yeah. quick. This is going to allow the user, you know, because we've been preaching a lot and not preaching, you know, like I said, we said this too. We said, we're not telling you what to do. We're telling yep. you what we do. And Absolutely, yeah. one of the things we've been really uh, doing as a group, as a ballistic development group, and just as you know, the group of us competitors here at Hornady is shooting larger groups to achieve your zero. Yep. It used to be a three or five shot group. Well, now it's 10 to 20, sometimes more than that. Uh, usually I'll shoot a 20 shotter uh, and then calculate my zero angle off that. This is going to make shooting, let's say a 10 to 20 shot group to achieve your zero that much easier, yeah. way less labor intensive, and then you, you're going to get a better, more accurate, quote-unquote, zero for your rifle. You're going to hit your target on that first shot more often. Yep. You're going to get better solutions out of the gate more often when you shoot a 20-shot zero. This is just the way it is. Yeah. I mean, we learn as we do this stuff, too. As you said, we used to shoot the three- and five-shot groups set in our zero. But, you know, how many times have you done that, gone to a match, and you shoot another group at the match, you go, huh. 
about two tenths off of what I thought it should have been. Yeah. Guess I'll knock a tenth off all my elevation yeah. and everything 500 and on. Or, yep, and then know. you get halfway through the match like, what in the heck? Why yeah. am I missing these targets? Yeah. Well, you just messed with your zero, dummy. Yeah. Off of three shots. <laughs> yep. So this is going to make shooting those larger zero samples just that much easier to do. Yep. Love it. And you could, you know, you could do this over a composite group too. Yeah. Yeah. That's yep. pretty, pretty handy. So there I've got gone through everything. I've got a 3.1 inch group, which is just under a minute at 302. It's pretty dang good. Especially Holy in those wind conditions. Yep. So here it, it just brought all those offsets in. It looked like a uh, 0.81 high and 4.1 right or 4.01. Sorry. Yep. So the reason I'm writing these down is because I shot at 300 yards. I have a hundred yard zero. So the app thinks that I've got my, my turrets are at zero, zero doing this. So this is kind of where it gets a little complicated, but it's just the, the nature yeah. of the beast. If you're sighting in at a little farther distances, Yep. I had a mill dialed into my turret here. So that's where, that's where it's going to get a little bit of math here, but it's not bad. So I had a mill dialed into my turret. So I should have hit a mill low, a mill at 300 yards is you know, 3.6 times three. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I think, I think I did 302. It's 10.87 is how low I should have had this group. So I'm going to manually make this 10.87 inches lower. So I've got 0.81 and it was high point or sorry, 0.81 high of 10.87. So I'm going to make this minus nine point, what would that be? Nine, six for my elevate, oop, that needs to be negative. And again, this is just how I do it. This, mm -hmm. you know, I did it at 300 yards. I want to keep that 100 yard zero just because it's convenient. Right. So I need, to, I need to account for what I dialed into my turret. I mean, you could totally just set a dot up at, you know, not touch your turrets, shoot a group, and it's going to be a mill low or, or whatever your gun's going to be mm -hmm. and have that raw value if you want. But I, I just find it convenient to just dial what the distance should be, shoot the group, and go from there and then i didn't dial any windage so the windage is fine so now i'm going to hit find zero angle and we'll save it because it got all that from me mm -hmm. and now we're so we're 9.96 inches low so that's you know 10.86 minus the the yeah. offset perfect so right what it should be and we're a little left or we need to to come left four inches four. just wow. like that perfect and that allows you to shoot further away for your zero to have uh, a, a better picture at what your actual dispersion looks like. Yep. And it's going to be easier to measure because you're not shooting a little, little bug hole. Yeah. Uh, and then you just back calculate it out, set yep. your zero at a hundred. And now you have an awesome zero angle that will, that will work for that rifle and ammo combination anywhere in the world, any day of the week. Yeah. Yep. And the, again, the reason I like to do it that way is at 300 yards, I can see every one of these bullet holes. Mm -hmm. If I shot a 20 shot group at a hundred yards, good luck. Yeah. Like you're going to be guessing. Yeah. So, you know, another method that we teach a lot of people is shoot four fives. So we've got four fives here. You would just do group analysis for analysis for each one of these five shot groups. And then you would average your average point of impacts. So yep. it's, again, it's a little math involved, yep. but I mean, anybody can punch the average offset yeah. into a calculator and, and get your point of impacts there. So that's another good way to do it because five shot groups, you can usually see all five bolts at a hundred yards. Yep. So yep. just kind of pick your poison, but I recommend at least a 15 or 20 shot group to get like a, your nuts on zero angle. Cause that stuff can, it can wander about a 10th when you get under 10 shots. 